What I got here is the Sony FX6. It's a cinema line camera. And to be completely honest, it's a camera that I never thought I would buy. When I started my camera journey, it was basically by borrowing a camera from a friend of mine. It was the Nikon D300S, I think it was called. APS-C camera made for sports photographers. It was, it, it was a great photo camera, but I also remember when I wanted to shoot video with it, it did not perform at all. It didn't have any good kind of video space. And that was what got me into Sony cameras to begin with. When I bought the Sony A6300, I remember that I was completely blown away of how good the autofocus performance was coming from the Nikon system. It was like, it was so incredibly fast. And you know, you had the whole like uh, face detection, AF and all that good stuff. But being able to shoot in 120 FPS in full HD, that was something that I loved. I mean, go back and check some of my earlier videos and you're gonna be able to see that the poker b-roll, hacker b-roll, office b-roll, all the b-rolls were shot in 120 FPS and I love it. Fun fact, back in 2021, I actually got to try this camera out. Sony asked if I wanted to give it a try, you know, take it for a spin, va? And the fun thing was that I actually went out and tested it and, you know, shot a couple of things and recorded a bunch of talking heads. It feels good, like, I, I think that if I were to hold this for an entire day, I would get some bigger biceps, which is cool. But I never made a video on the camera. And I think it was because when I was using the camera, I felt like I was taking a step outside of my knowledge base. It was kind of a big camera. I'm so used to using the A7S III. I was not used to using a cinema camera like this. I mean, take a look at this side. There's so many different things that I don't know what they do or didn't know what they do, now I do know. But it's one of these cameras that takes time to grow into. It's not something that you're gonna understand straight from the get-go. And testing that out, I felt like a complete beginner. Just realized that there's a button in here. <laughs> oh, custom, custom button. Nice. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh what do you have? What do you have? not, what you done? The eye is always going from 200 to <gasps> 3200. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not big, no. Best, but them up. The more that I progressed as a filmmaker, the more that I've developed my style, and the more that I've gotten deeper into the YouTube and content creator thing, and the more that I travel and capture videos, make commercials for brands, the more I realized that I want to have something that is a real cinema camera. The A7S III has been that for me. It's one of the best cameras that I've used. I love it. It's like, if you're thinking about buying the A7S III, do it. You're not going to be disappointed. It has so much to offer as a content creator and videographer. I love that camera, even though it's almost two and a half years old, which is sick. Can you imagine how time flies? And I wanted to make this video because maybe you think like, hey, Peter, why, why are you spending $7,000 on a camera like this? I do have a couple of fun plans in the works that I'm going to use this camera for, but I also want to talk about why you buy a camera like this for someone that is not interested in cameras. Maybe you're just watching my videos because you want to have a good time. And if this is your first time here, hey, welcome to the channel. Hope you're going to enjoy the video. If you do, don't forget to subscribe. One of the biggest features uh, with this camera compared to my A7S III is that you have everything that you need built into the camera. So when you attach a lens on this, you don't need to add anything else to the lens if you want to go out and shoot. If your camera does not have a built-in ND filter, the only option that you have is to either increase the shutter or increase the aperture so that it gets a lot darker. But if you increase the aperture and make it like a higher f-stop, then you're also gonna lose the shallow depth of field. And that is why you need to have sort of like a variable ND filter that you attach to the lens of the camera, like so. And ND, for those of you that don't know, is neutral density filter, which is basically sunglasses for your cameras. Check this out. So when I press the ND button, you can see that it kind of adds on a layer of glass to the sensor. The cool thing with that layer of glass is not that it just adds on multiple different layers, but it is actually a kind of like stepless ND filter that works all the way down from ND4 to ND 128. This on the other hand is the Ronin 4D. And when you're changing the ND filters on this camera, you can kind of see that it's like actually changing filters with each strength 
that I adjust. It's not a seamless operation when you're switching between the different levels of ND filters that you want to use. On the FX6, on the other hand, the entire operation is seamless. So you don't see the actual ND getting darker except for the image actually being adjusted in the camera. But the way that this works is that the piece of glass that goes down or the display, if you may, is affected by electricity. So the more electricity that is added on to the glass, the darker your filter is going to get, which is rad. I don't know about you, but I would love to see that in uh, maybe a future camera. A7S4 maybe. When it comes to battery life, for example, comparing this to the A7S3, there's no competition. On the A7S3, you have the NPFZ batteries, which are great. They work fantastically well when you're doing like day-to-day -day operation, but comparing it to these kind of batteries that you get with this camera, night and day. So when you're rigging up a Sony A7S III, then you basically create a cinema camera like this, but without all the internal features that you have in a camera like this. It is not a heavy camera, even though you add on the handles and the display. It's still a very small footprint and it's very easy to carry around and you have the big handle here on the side. When it comes to doing filmmaking and when it comes to shooting short movies, having a camera like this is something that make everything a lot easier. You have time codes, which makes it easier when you jump into the editing process. You have XLR outputs in the top handle and you also have these buttons, which makes it very easy to like flick the different ISO levels that you can customize and the white balance as well. Without having to go into the menus, you have everything like right at your thumb. Is this something that you need in order to be able to make videos? Absolutely not. This is something that is made for professionals. I have shot almost all my videos with the Sony a7S III, Sony a7 III and the Sony cameras throughout the years. But having a camera like this in my arsenal will make shooting videos way easier whenever I want to you know, shoot a commercial on the go or have a specific look on my videos. Another thing that I've noticed when I'm using this camera is that when you have the camera handheld like this, it looks a little bit more cinematic compared to the A7S III. I think it's because you don't have the IBIS in this camera, but also because it's a heavier camera than the A7S III. It's gonna be extremely fun to see how this camera is gonna perform and what I can create with this camera because it's definitely going to help me to elevate my filmmaking to another level and make sure that I can create even more awesome content for you. I see this as a tool and in order to take my skills to the next level, I need to have a better tool to help me do that. Whenever you reach a point or a plateau that you feel, you know, my tools are not sufficient anymore because I know everything about them. That is when you should upgrade. So if you're just starting out, don't see this and think like, oh, I need to buy exactly what Peter has because uh, he has the best things. No, use what you got and learn everything about those cameras before you start thinking about buying something else. I would love to know, what do you think about the FX6? It's kind of like a two and a half year old camera right now or two year old. Do drop a comment down below and uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done that. And I would love to see you in the next video. Oh, and by the way, if you want to learn how to edit like I do, head over to the link in the description, my Final Cut Pro course. There's going to be a lot of stuff uploaded, including some nice footage from the FX6. Take care. Have a good one. See ya! And now, to be able to find the right skin tones, we want to go up and add a hue saturation curve. And I'm get, just gonna start cranking up the hue versus sat so that it kind of expands here on the vector scope. I'm gonna choose the hue versus hue color picker and click on his face.